Hi everyone, welcome to the first Cozy Creative session. So in this series of videos, the idea is that I'll be working in my sketchbook in the quiet of the studio and you can choose to join me and either paint or draw along with me or perhaps work on your own projects and I'll just keep you company in the background. So make yourself a cup of tea or whichever drink you prefer, get comfortable and let's have some quiet creative time together. So I'll be chatting to you a little bit while I work, but this isn't going to be a super chatty video because the idea is that we find relaxation through art for an hour or two. So it'll be quite quiet. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be working from four prompts that I've given myself and I'm going to fill a double page spread in my sketchbook. I'll let you know the prompts before I start and they'll also come up on the screen so that you can use them too if you'd like to. So if you enjoy these videos, please give them a like and leave a comment below letting me know what you were working on during the session because I would love to know. And you can share anything else you'd like with me or the community. Just leave a comment below and I will get back to as many as I possibly can. And if you'd like more videos each month and extra content, then you can check out my Patreon. I'll put that on the screen now. OK, let's get started. I'm really looking forward to this first session because I feel like I've had a busy week and I really need some quiet time in the studio. You'll have to excuse my big furry arms because it's still pretty cold in the studio. So I'm wearing a giant fleecy top. Um, I'm going to be working from the deep, deep light watercolour palette that I have. Um, I might just work with, well, certainly for the first prompt, I think I'm going to work with one colour because this is a really excellent way. If you feel like you just want to keep things simple and you're not really sure of what you're going to do or you're feeling a little bit, I don't know, feeling a bit of artistic block or anything like that. I always find just choosing one colour and working monochromatically is really good for just getting going. So I think I'm actually going to use Natasha's Grey, which is a colour that I developed with Deep Deep Light. They made this colour for me to my specifications and they did an excellent job. So I'm going to be using that because it's great. It's a great one for working monochromatically because if you add more water, it looks really different to how it looks in mass tone. So I can get a lot of tonal variation with that one. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to put my palette there in case I need it. Um, the first prompt is going to be, I want you to paint or draw somewhere that you either wish you were or would love to be. So that's going to be our first prompt, paint where you would love to be. And I think I already know what I'm going to paint. <laughs> so let's get started. So I'll put all the details of any art supplies I use during these videos. I'll put them in the description beneath the video. Let's just get that really wet. I'm gonna pop a little bit in the palette just so I can add more water if I want to. I might have to just move this palette to here because I need a bit more space. Okay, and I guess I will start on this side of the sketchbook. So let's just move that slightly. So I think I'm going to use just 
one brush. This is another way I really like to simplify things. And the brush I'm using is the Betty Hayways number no. seven watercolor brush, which is honestly one of my favorite watercolor brushes ever. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I've bought all the brushes with my own money. I just really, really love them. So I'll leave a link for you. It's not an affiliate link or anything. Um, as I say, I just really love these brushes. They hold a lot of water and pigment, but they also have a really fine point. So if you just wanted to get one of their brushes, I would recommend the number seven. And I'm just going to allow myself to to kind of try and paint without pressure because this is the idea of these sessions is that we just enjoy painting. And it's in our sketchbooks, so you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time to realize this. I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, it's no surprise that I'm painting a little house in the hills. This Natasha's grey is such a lovely colour. They did such a good job with this. So yeah, I'll have a link to Deep Deep Light as well in the description box below. So you can check out the palette that I curated for them and um, all of their other beautiful colours. I also have a discount code as well, so don't forget to use that if you want to treat yourself because you get 10% off. And that will be in the description below as well. I kind of want this to feel like it's surrounded by trees and bushes. I love that, like little hidden houses. Natasha's grey is such a pretty colour because you can see different colours coming through so I can sometimes see it looks like a little bit of yellow and a little bit of pink so it looks slightly violety sometimes but it's a real kind of gorgeous like slate grey almost like a graphite grey kind of colour um, so it looks quite dark in mass tone, but when you use it in a wash, it's like all these other colors become apparent. So I'm trying to make this look like it's hidden there in the, in the trees, kind of like nestled in the hills as well. Um, a bit of the foreground.
be nice when I film these videos in the spring and summer months and I can have the window open and hopefully we'll hear birdsong which would be lovely at the moment I think it's all pretty quiet I feel like there's so much noise in a lot of videos and it's like this pushing also of this um, short form content all the while. So this is kind of a bit of a reaction to that, kind of pushing back and, you know, reclaiming the long form content and just i think we all need a bit of quiet time sometimes as well in this world so this is what i'm hoping to achieve with these videos and i hope they bring a little bit of peace and calm into your life and help you make a little bit of time to be creative If you perhaps don't have much time in your week to do that. I don't know how often I'm going to be able to film these, so I'm not going to promise anything at the outset. Because um, obviously they're quite long, so it's, you know, it takes a bit to put them together. I'd love to make them a fairly regular thing on my channel. Be something we all look forward to, I hope. Yeah, using this brush, because it's not um, like really tiny, it's not a really tiny brush. I mean, probably to some people this is quite tiny, but to me it isn't. Um, it's kind of stopping me from being too precise because I can, you know, only be so tight with this brush. <laughs> you know, it's like um, if I had a teeny tiny brush, I'd be doing all sorts of small details, which is, you know, something that I kind of get bogged down in a little bit. I mean, there's a time and a place for lots of detail in your work. And sometimes when you sit down with your sketchbook, and you just have maybe an hour or so to work in it and you just want to do a few different drawings or paintings you don't want to get bogged down in the detail you just want to get in there and just try and I don't know get some things down on the paper fairly quickly and I find that a larger brush really helps me to do that Some of those nice sort of pine trees. 
this side as well. So I love the shape, the contrast. be interested to know um, if some of you are following along and and painting somewhere you would love to be I'd like to know what the variations are going to be because it's obviously going to differ from person to person probably quite a lot there we go we've got a little puff of puff of chimney smoke coming out there Whenever I put the windows in, I always think of it as giving the house some eyes. <laughs> and I think I'm going to have a nice bear tree there. With some of the branches poking up. and wobbly. I think I'm nearly finished with this one, so we're going to move on to the next prompt, I think. I think I'm going to leave that there. Shall I leave that there? It's always hard to know when to stop. Maybe a little, a little bush in there. But it's nicely nestled in. I mean, is there anything nicer than a little cottage? 
kind of nestled in amongst all the trees and the hills? I don't think so. <laughs> So the second prompt is going to be something that you can see in your workspace or in your studio. So I'm going to paint some of my Wallace Seymour paint tubes because this isn't something I would normally paint. I'm usually a landscape and nature artist. So I want to try and challenge myself a little bit sometimes in these videos. So I'm going to paint the paint tubes. Let me know what you're going to paint if you decide to follow along. Let me know in the comment section below what you're painting from your studio or workspace. So I think what I'm going to do this time, I may work in one colour again, but it's going to be a different colour. I think I'm going to work in a colour called Partridge. This is one of my new favourites because again, it's another colour that's great to use for monochromatic painting. So that's lots of different colours kind of coming through, depending on how much water you use, um, or whether you use it more in mass tone. It's just, it's a really interesting colour. It's kind of like a sepia, but with more colours going on. So I think what I'm gonna do, where should I put these paint tubes? Maybe we'll just continue working on this side and I'll do them underneath and then we'll move on to the next page. So, okay, no pre-planning. Let's just go in there. Let's try not to overthink it. Because my main problem is overthinking things. And if I'm forced to work quickly then the overthinking doesn't happen as much. Actually, paint tubes are a really nice shape to paint. <laughs> You might see as this colour dries, it um, it kind of shows the different colours within the paint. So am I going to do the writing on there? Should have done that a bit bigger really, shouldn't I? I feel like I'm doing these teeny tiny little things when really it would have been easier to do it bigger. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's in the sketchbook. Might have to go in and put a bit more definition in that later. Let's just try another one. So you're going to get to see all my mistakes. <laughs> well, they're tiny, so I mean, I'm going to have to do the other ones in a similar size, aren't I? Now I've started tiny.
You know, one thing I struggle with, with watercolour, <laughs> is the fact that it takes so long to dry. Now, I know that some people would say it doesn't. I think because I'm used to working with acrylic and acrylic gouache, which dries really quite quickly. I feel like I often end up with very blurred edges. If I'm working quickly and doing it kind of wet in wet, I guess that's the nature of it really, isn't it? But um, if I want a bit more precision, you have to wait for it to dry and then go in again, which is what I'd do if I was working um, normally, you know, not kind of doing timed. I mean, these aren't strictly timed uh, drawings or paintings, but I am trying to work fairly quickly. And so I don't have time to let it dry. I really like that one, actually. I like this one more. <laughs> that one looks a little funny, but you know what? We're just gonna, we will do what we can do. Yeah, deep, deep light have such interesting colours. So many of them are like granulating and you get this gorgeous colour separation. And they're really quite, I don't know, like multi-layered colours, if that makes sense. I'm going to make him a bit longer. Let's make him a bit longer. I really quite like that one. This one has gone a bit weird. Um, it was when I tried to put the shadow in, I think. I feel like I need to let that dry and then add the shadow. <laughs> Shall I not add a shadow to that one? Perhaps I won't. Let's see if I can just add a little bit of a shadow. <laughs> I'm worried because I think they're going to run again, but maybe I try not to go too close. We just embrace it for what it is. Maybe if it runs, it runs. 
think I'm going to write the prompts in just um, to remind myself when I look through this sketchbook at a later date. So the prompt here was somewhere I would like to be. And then this was an item in the studio. So we'll write that in. Where should we write that in? I don't want it to be level with that, so maybe. If there's a space when I finished, I might write Cozy Creative Sessions number one. <laughs> It'd be fun to keep a track of these. Okay, I think it might be time to move on to the next prompt. So for this one, it's going to be leaves. So just as many different leaf shapes as you like. I'm just going to make them up from my imagination, from my head, but you can use reference pictures if you want. But I'm just going to fill half of this page with different leaf shapes and just have fun with it, really, because the idea of these sessions is just to kind of relax and not put too much pressure on ourselves. So which colour shall I go for? I wonder whether maybe... I'm going to use bent grass so I think this is a beautiful colour and it's still quite muted so it really fits in with the other colours I've used. This isn't going to be the most colourful sketchbook page in existence but I think it will look quite pretty anyway. Right so how am I going to do this? Just let the paint flow and and just enjoy it really. Deep, deep light colours are so natural, beautiful. I believe they're based on the colours that they see 
in nature in Latvia. And they're just so lovely to work with, like straight out of the pan rather than having to mix nature colours from brighter colours. They just have these nature colours ready to go, as it were. They have a lot of granulating colours and I love those for texture. I'm just going to do some little tiny leaf shapes. I'm sorry, I'm not talking very much at all during this one. It's just like a kind of meditation. <laughs> it's lovely. Actually, just filming this now makes me really want to make sure I film these 
fairly often because it's so relaxing. It's nice not to have to talk all the time. I feel like often when I'm filming videos, I'm talking a lot and it's actually really nice not to have to do that. quite tiring actually talking a lot. Well I find it is. I don't know whether that's just because I'm an introvert. <laughs> it could be. But I think also like creative work it takes a lot of brain power <laughs> and a lot of concentration. And um, trying to talk while you're doing it is actually quite difficult. See, I don't know what these leaves and plants are supposed to be, but it's just, I'm just making them up <laughs> and it's just fun. I am loving this colour. It looks, it's almost like it, it's like a golden brown in mass tone but more of a gorgeous sort of yellowy gold when you add quite a bit of water. It's really glowing actually, it's a lovely colour. The um, palette I curated for Deep Deep Light is called Mellow Days and Cozy Nights and it's very much based around the colours I love to use in my work because I have quite a specific colour palette that I like to use. Um, those of you who are long time watchers will know that I love muted, moody, earthy colours. So the palette kind of consists of those kind of colours and my Natasha's Grey, which was developed especially for the palette. And um, it's kind of also based upon the subjects I love to paint as well. So nightscapes and cosy day scenes the emphasis on kind of, well, I kind of feel you can use the palette for every season, but I mainly love painting the autumn and winter. So, and it has a lot of greens in it though, because I do love the earthy natural greens that deep, deep light tend to do. Gonna add a few more of those little dashes just because I feel like they could be like little seeds or something, couldn't they? And feels like it gives it a little bit of energy. Adds a bit more pattern. Um, what shall I do up here? Let's do some more small single leaves. So in these sessions I'll be using 
different materials. I mean, next time I might decide to do a mixed media or something, I don't know. And obviously you don't have to use the materials I'm using. You can just use whatever you have. But each time I'll try and talk a little bit about the materials I'm using. I love this shape because it's just so quick to do. <laughs> I'm not actually timing these, I don't have a timer going, but I'm thinking they're probably roughly 15 minutes each, maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but... I guess I'll find out when I edit this video. I think actually it'd be quite handy to have a reference picture or pictures of different leaves when you're doing something like this because I think I would have more variation if I was working from something but it has been fun just making up these different shapes I'm nearly finished with this one and we'll move on to the last prompt. I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, so the last prompt is going to be an imaginary bird. So you've got to come up with something entirely from your imagination, no reference pictures. It can be as fun or as quirky as you like. By the way, I've just noticed my hands look so red. <laughs> it's so cold in here that um, in the winter, I always have to wear a fleece and I'm still cold. <laughs> My hands look so cold. So I apologise for that. Hopefully the warmer weather will come soon. Um, okay, I think I'm going to use for the bird. I kind of feel like I want to use a lovely blue. So maybe 
we will go Ooh, what should we go for i'm gonna go for j blue <laughs> that's appropriate isn't it <laughs> i didn't realize that until i said it um okay so an imaginary bird let's just let's go for this i think he's going to be facing that way Maybe we'll give him a nice long body, maybe his little tail come up like that. And then his wing should be a bit like maybe there. I'm just kind of blocking him in at the moment. Um, his legs are going to go off the page, aren't they? Let's just get him. Um, okay. Oh, I love these colours together. The bent grass and the J blue. Very nice. I mean, how am I going to add an eye with difficulty? <laughs> I kind of feel like this one <laughs> it looks a bit funny, doesn't it? I feel like this one's going to be it's to dry and then I go over it or something. But we only have limited time. Actually, I'm going to screw with that because his eye looks weird there. Um, maybe what I might have to do for this one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, excuse the noise if you can hear that. I can hear a motorbike and... I think Dominic rolling something along a rough surface. Be try and add in. I mean, I'm doing like wet in wet, but try and add a little bit of detail here. I feel like, how can I? Maybe I can lift out a bit for his eye. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking the paint, I'm taking the paint off the brush. Um, Let's try and lift out a little bit of the beak while that's still wet. Let's see if we can lift out a bit of this, his little eye. Know how successful this is going to be. Um, not very is the answer. <laughs> So maybe we'll keep going. Just keep lifting, keep lifting. Oh, it's getting there. Come on. Dear. I want to wreck my brush. <laughs> okay, I've managed to lift out a bit of the paint. At least we have something that kind of resembles an eye.
Gosh, who is that on that motorbike out there? This ain't a racetrack, you know. <laughs> if you can't hear it, then, well, trust me, there's a motorbike out there and someone is hurtling around the country lanes like an absolute maniac. Always worries me when they do that because we have a lot of wildlife here and there are a lot of deer and so on. And um, I always worry they're gonna hit them. But have you noticed how people drive like maniacs these days? Everyone seems to be in such a hurry all the while or just driving really recklessly. I drive like an absolute granny. I drive like a granny and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I feel like we need to lift out maybe a little bit more here and there. There we go. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? I'm using really quite a dark colour for this bird. So a bit of lifting out is needed. I love the texture it gives actually when you when you lift some of the paint. Really nice texture and brush strokes. Okay, we don't want to overdo it. I notice if I like something that I'm doing, I tend to keep going and then I overdo it. So we gotta stop. I feel like I wanna add, let's try and add a few little marks here. A little pattern rather. make his tummy a bit darker. Oh, the paint is running nicely there. We need to give him some little legs. Where do we think they should be? Maybe one here. I mean, they're going to go off the off the page, but no, we didn't want to maybe the other one here. <laughs> I always find birds' legs really difficult unless I'm actually looking at like a reference image. <laughs> he looks a bit funny, um, but he's a little bit folk arty. We're not going to worry about it. It's it's all okay. It doesn't matter if his little legs are a bit. Um, strange. <laughs> yeah, his legs are a little strange.
<laughs> there's not a lot I can do about it. So I'm just going to have to embrace it. We said quirky was good, didn't we? At the beginning of this. So his little quirky legs are just fine. Maybe he's perched on a very uncomfortable branch. <laughs> it's making me laugh. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. I don't think there's much we can do. I might put, I wonder whether just to take a little bit. Can I take a little bit off and make some little, maybe make them a bit less heavy. Sorry about your legs, mate. But you're such a pretty bird. Okay, we're going to say, we're going to say this is done. This is the end of the first cosy creative session. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, when this is dry, I'm going to write in the other prompts and I might do a little, I don't know, a little bit of lettering with the cosy creative sessions or something. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next one. So take care everyone and let me know in the comment section below what you painted, whether you're working on your own project, whether you were following along with what I was doing um, and how did it turn out and what materials did you use? And do you want to see more of these videos? If you do, let me know. It helps me to know how much people like something so that I can judge maybe how often they should be on YouTube. Does that make sense? <laughs> you see, now I need lunch. It's lunch time. I'm hungry. I'm not making much sense. So, okay, I'm going to go. I can't string a sentence together. <laughs> I've done some artwork. It's all good. Okay, take care, everyone. And I'll see you again soon for another cosy creative session. Um, yeah, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.